Good morning, friends, and welcome to Ebenezer United Church of Christ, where no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, we are really glad you are here. We are really glad also that the Still Speaking Band is sharing their gifts with us this morning, and we are grateful for all the ways in which your delightful music and lovely voices will help all of us be drawn in to experience the holy in this time of worship. Friends, today is not just the third Sunday of Lent. In the United Church of Christ, today is also Amistad Sunday. We remember that the Amistad incident is an important moment in the history of the United States and in the United Church of Christ. In 1839, 55 Africans were illegally captured off the Ivory Coast in the slave trade. They rebelled for their freedom while being transported out of Havana, Cuba, on a schooner called La Amistad. The captives, captives successfully took over the, trip, the ship and ordered the crew to sail back to Africa, but weeks later, the ship ended up far north, right off the tip of Long Island, New York. U.S. officials boarded that ship and arrested the captives and jailed them in Connecticut where they were befriended by Christian abolitionists, many belonging to churches that are now a part of the United Church of Christ. The abolitionists hired lawyers, including former President John Quincy Adams, to appeal the case all the way to the United States Supreme Court, which declared in 1841 that the captives were to be free. The abolitionist victory created a momentum that formed in 1846 the American Missionary Association. And the work of this historic agency is still present in the mission and ministries of the United Church of Christ to this day. So we keep this in mind as we experience this third Sunday of Lent, this season of reflection, of, of 
thinking more deeply and more profoundly about how Jesus calls us to truly follow in the way of true and abundant life. Now, there's a couple instructions for you as we prepare to be called to this time of worship. You're going to see that there are actually four parts in the call to worship today. There's the one part, which will be our liturgist. Then there's the south side part and the north side part. This has nothing to do with where you live, okay? <laughs> it has everything to do with where you are in relationship to this center aisle, right? So if you are over here, you are the south side. If you are over here, you're the north side. The fourth part in our liturgy is the all part, which is self-explanatory, right? That's all of us. So now I encourage us to be aware of who we are and whose we are as we are called to this time of worship. The community belongs to God. Everything, even the things we think are ours, belong to God. We bear God's image in our own faces. We build on God's word. We are stewards of God's vineyard, and all of it is precious to God. Now please stand as we sing together to be faithful. Please join me as we pray. Wow, sometimes your teaching is difficult, Holy One. We hear your story, but we would rather not. Your truth is there for those who wish to hear. And we pray today not only for understanding, but also for the willingness to let it change us. May your word enter us and not be forgotten. May your still speaking spirit take residence and transform us into your body that lives your kingdom in the world. Amen. Please be seated. Our scripture today comes to us from the 12th chapter of Mark's Gospel, verses 1 through 17. Listen for a word from God through these words. Then Jesus began to speak to them in parables. A man planted a vineyard, but put a fence around it, dug a pit for the wine press, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went away. When the season came, he sent a slave to the tenants 
to collect from them his share of the produce of the vineyard. But they seized him and beat him and sent him away empty-handed. And again he sent another slave to them. This one they beat over the head and insulted. Then he sent another, and that one they killed. And so it was with many others, some they beat and others they killed. He had still one other, a beloved son. Finally, he sent him to them saying, they will respect my son. But those tenants said to one another, this is the heir, come to let us kill, let us kill him and the inheritance will be ours. So they seized him, killed him and threw him out of the vineyard. What then will the owner of the vineyard do? He will come and destroy the tenants and give the vineyard to others. Have you not read this scripture? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. When they realized that he had told this parable against them, they wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowd, so they left him and went away. Then they sent him to some Pharisees and some Herodians to trap him in what he had said. And they came and said to Jesus, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality, but teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. It is lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Should we pay them or should we not? But knowing their hypocrisy, Jesus said to them, why are you putting me to the test? Bring me a denarius and let me see it. And they brought one. Then he said to them, whose head is this and whose title? They answered, Caesar's. Jesus said to them, give to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God's. And they were truly, utterly amazed at him. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. Thank you. And now I invite the children to come forward at this time, if they want to. I know they're busy doing other things back there, which is wonderful. Nice, huh? How are you this morning? Everybody's doing good? You doing good? So sometimes people ask us hard questions and we're not exactly sure how to answer. If I asked you, hey, did you clean your room last night like your mom told you to? If your answer, if the truth is, uh-uh, I did not, right? But you don't want to say that because maybe you don't want your mom to get upset with you, right? It's like, she probably knows. But, right? It's like, if I say no, then I might get in trouble with my mom. But if I say yes, just to keep the peace, that's not true. That would be lying, right? We don't want to do that. So it's really hard. It's like, oh, how am I going to answer this question? Well, in our scripture today, there's some people who are asking Jesus a question. And, and they do it because, you know, people really, really love Jesus. They love Jesus. The crowds of people love him. And, and sometimes Jesus and the, the people who are in charge of the temple or the church, sometimes those religious leaders and Jesus don't always see things eye to eye. Right? They both worship the same God. They're both Jewish, but they don't always see eye to eye. And they ask Jesus this question to try and get him in trouble, kind of, just so that he'll stop saying things that make the people so upset. Okay? So they say, hey, should we pay taxes? Do you know what taxes are? You are a deduction. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, if, if you make a dollar, right, um, you don't get that whole dollar once you get to be grown up and get to be an adult. A certain portion of that money goes toward um, helping us to live together in, a, in this country. So it goes toward things like paving roads so that when you drive your car, you don't like break your car because there's big holes in the road or schools or, or helping to keep us safe. There's lots of different things that that money goes for. So you get a portion of that dollar every time you work. 
So when they say, is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar? Caesar was the king, the king of Rome, right? So yeah, the people had to pay their taxes. But on the money that they had back then, Caesar's face was all over it. So that was considered to be not a good thing, right? It wasn't, so, you didn't want to carry something around that where you pledged your loyalty to the king because you're supposed to be pledging your loyalty to God. So Jesus is like, hmm, how should I answer this question? He says, does anybody have a denarius, which is the money back then, right? And he says, look at it, whose image is on it? So we don't have a king, but we have former presidents on our, on our money. So do you know whose picture this is? Whose image is this, do you know? You know, Tiffany, do you know whose image this is? No. <laughs> Eliza, it is a penny, very good. The face on the penny, anybody know? Lincoln, President Abraham Lincoln. I couldn't find a nickel <laughs> in my house. Anybody know whose face, whose image is on the nickel? Thomas Jefferson. Jefferson. The dime, this is a dime. This is, how much is a dime? It's 10, 10 cents, very good. This one's a little harder. Do you know whose face this is? Mm. What about any of the big people? Any of the big kids know whose face is on the dime? Eisenhower. Roosevelt. Very good. Franklin Delano Roosevelt. And who's, do you know who this is? This is a quarter. George Washington. Very good. George Washington's face is on there. Now, we are just honoring the presidents by putting the money on there, but, and on our money it says, in God we trust, but back then... It was Caesar's face, and it was like, in Caesar we trust. So people who were devout religious people, Jews, they didn't carry around money. Mm -hmm. It says, in God we trust in our money too. Very good, Kalia. Very good. So Jesus, in answering this question, should we pay taxes or not? He said, whose face is on there? And it was Caesar's. And he said, so you know what? Give to Caesar what's Caesar's. Caesar's face is on it, give it to him. But give to God what is God's. Who's, what does God's face look like? Do you know what God's face looks like? What does God's face look like? The phone a friend question? Mm -hmm. You know what? Huh? The mouth? God's face looks like all of our faces, right? If you put all of all the people in the whole world together, that's what God's face looks like because you are created in the image of God, so you bear God's image. So when it says, give to Caesar what Caesar, it's like, oh, give Caesar your money, but give God your whole self because all of you comes from God, all of you belongs to God. So when you let your light shine and show God's love in all the ways you can, you are image bearers. You are showing what God looks like and what God's love looks like in the world. So I just want to remind you that one of the ways, you guys are good at doing that in a lot of ways, one of the ways that we are doing it, our project as a church, is our One Great Hour of Sharing mission. It's one of the five special offerings of the United Church of Christ. Did every one of, did any of you, do you need one of these? Do you have one at home? No? You want one? Okay, you have one at home, very good. Lucas, you have one at home too? Yeah, no, here. So, thank you, for, yeah, I think you, I'll give you another one, you know what, just in case. So, what you wanna do is, do you know what goes in here? Money. Money, yeah, we wanna put some coins in here or some dollars, so every day, one of the things, oh, it's broken here. One of the things you can do is at dinner time when you're sitting together, eating dinner with your family, you can talk about the ways that you're showing God's love, some good and, and kind and loving things you've done. And when everybody's done sharing, you can put something in there because we're trying really hard to let the light of God's love shine through us, okay? I just put those coins in there. I can share them though. When everybody starts singing, I'll share my coins, okay? All right, perfect. So 
Everybody else is going to stand up and sing together. Uh, Love is greater than fear. Oh, I like the greater than sign. Love is greater than fear. And we can head back to the children's church table. You want to come with me? Let's go, friends. Uh, Just a note. uh, The verses on this song, the phrasing can be a little tricky. So if you're not comfortable singing along, that's fine. Uh, If you are, that's great too. But for sure, you have to sing the chorus because it consists of four words or basically love is greater than, greater than, greater than fear. On this Amistad Sunday, where we are called to absolutely remember that all people are created in God's image and are to be treated with dignity as we recognize their sacred humanity, on this Sunday we recall again that of course people are not property and cannot be owned. And in our scripture today, Jesus challenges the concept of ownership altogether. So I love the perceptiveness of the Reverend Barbara Brown Taylor, who understands that it might be more helpful to hear this parable in our own context. So, once upon a time, what does once upon a time mean? This is a story, and I want you to go and say, do you know what happened in Waldo? Once upon a time, there was a rich business person from Chicago who bought the dilapidated Waldo Apple Orchard. 
They dutifully pruned the trees, they fertilized them, and they fixed up the sail shed, and they put a brand new hand-painted sign out there on Highway 57. Then they leased the space to a local family for less than market value with the understanding that the owner would get 10% of the apples that are produced. With no business experience whatsoever and very high hopes of owning their own place someday, the new tenants agreed to this with the, the owner and they sealed the deal with a handshake. Then that rich landowner got into their Range Rover and drove back to Chicago. And no one in Waldo ever saw him again. The tenants loved the place like it was their own. They went out to tend the trees at dawn and they stayed out each day until after dark. They used organic pesticides. They hauled water by hand during the summer drought. And when the first frost was forecast before the apples were ripe, they built small fires throughout the orchard and they stoked them all night long so the trees stayed warm, blanketed under wood smoke. <clears throat> then, when October came, the air was rich with the smell of applesauce. Every time the tenants took a deep breath, their mouths watered. <laughs> And the trees were so heavy with apples that they looked like children dressing up with way too much jewelry on. Now, when the time to harvest came, it had to happen quickly. So the tenants worked in shifts, half of them sleeping while others picked. And 72 hours later, the harvest was complete. And mountains of apples rose from the wood bins in the sail shed. Happily exhausted. The tenants were standing, admiring the fruits of their labor when they heard gravel crunching under tires. And they turned around to see an 18-wheeler with Illinois plates backing up to the shed. Two massive guys with bulging muscles got out and started loading apples into that truck without even introducing themselves. And when one of the tenants approached them to negotiate that 10% thing, one of the gigantic guys just picked him up and set him out of the way. So the rest of the tenants got together and introduced these truckers to the small town version of the people's court. One of them cranked up a bobcat while the others pulled out pitchforks and pruning hooks and it did not take long to persuade the landowner's men to return to Illinois empty handed. Now, we know the tenants were wrong. It was not their orchard. They made a deal. The orchard or the vineyard owner also deserved their share of that produce. But there's something about this story, whether it's from Waldo or from the Bible, that just doesn't sit right with us. Maybe it's the landowner's insistence on sending messengers, including slaves we heard in our scripture, who in that story were repeatedly beaten and often killed. Or maybe it's because nobody likes an absentee landlord, or, or maybe it's because we have relatives who were sharecroppers, or we have knowledge of how unjust that system has always been. Reverend Rogers' body language can't disguise his scorn of that system whenever he just says the word. And we get that, right? Sharecropping is a hard life. Tending someone else's land, bringing in someone else's harvest, making someone else's profit, all while typically being charged far more than what remains at the end of the day for the sharecropper which ended up just making it another form of slavery. Because, let's face it, that's not the American way, right? Before the time that we were a nation, people from all over the world came here, fueled by the dream of ownership, even if it was just their own small, tiny little piece 
of Paradise. Has anybody here seen the movie music, the musical uh, Hamilton? You seen Hamilton? Yeah. One of my favorite verses that George Washington sings in that Broadway musical is in the song, One Last Time. He actually sings a verse of scripture from Micah 4.4. Everyone shall sit under their own vine and fig tree, and no one shall make them afraid. And he goes on, I want to sit under my own vine and fig tree, a moment alone in the shade, at home in this nation we've made. That is the American way own your own home, own your own land, grow your own food for your own table with enough time to sit back and bask in the fruits of your labor. Most of us in this country believe in ownership, in autonomy, and self-reliance. Whether or not we can pull it off, those are the values that we've been taught, and those are the values that we strive to live by. Except... Jesus was not an American. And if we are to believe what he says in our parable today, those are not the values of the kingdom of God. Ownership of this vineyard in our story today is not the issue because it is not for sale, nor will it ever be. <clears throat> the issue for Jesus in our scripture today is not ownership, but stewardship the management of the household of faith and the care of the people that has been entrusted to the religious leaders and the care and connectedness of, of all of us that God entrusts to us. So we've jumped ahead in our story today. We have not even celebrated Jesus' entry into Jerusalem, which will happen on Palm Sunday. But... In the narrative, in the story, Jesus is in Jerusalem. And this is during the last week of his life. The scripture that comes directly before our story today is Jesus turning over the tables of the money changers in the temple during the Passover festival. Jesus is angry because of the system that has been built up around the religious celebration of Passover. There's a market system in place, right, that takes advantage of people's faithfulness, of their desire to participate in religious rituals. And the price gouging that has become an accepted practice, unchallenged by the religious officials and leaders, well, Jesus is vehemently even violently angry about all of this. It's unjust. It is unjust, and it certainly isn't of God. And I think we, sitting here, we can recognize that, right? What might be harder for us to see, however, is who we are in this story today. Several commentaries on this scripture caution us to not think of ourselves standing behind Jesus, pointing at the blindness and the injustice of others, right? Because today's parable thinks, invites us to think quite clearly about ourselves and how we see ourselves in the context of the, the kingdom of God that Jesus proclaims to us, a kingdom that is not a piece of ground or a tract of land, but a community a way of living that is shaped by the way that we connect and live in relationship with God and each other and all of creation. We're called to be good stewards. Stewards are not people I'm related to, right? Stewards in the Bible are managers, caretakers, right? We're called to be good stewards, good and compassionate caretakers who are welcome on this earth and welcome to enjoy it, as long as we remember whose it is and how it's supposed to be cared for and utilized. We can love it as our own. 
whether we're talking about the earth, our very lives, and our connectedness to all people and things. We can and we should take incredible pleasure in the fruits and blessings of all of it. Still, ultimately, it does not belong to us. All things are a gift from God that are entrusted to us. And all that God, as the creator and owner, asks is that we remember that we are stewards of what belongs to God. We are tenants who are invited to enjoy all of this through God's extravagant generosity. The God who asks that we are generous in return, sharing a portion of our time and talent and treasure, a portion of ourselves through relationship, right? Not because God needs it. God turns around and, and blesses others with it. God doesn't ask us because God needs it, but because we need it. We need to cultivate generous hearts in order to remember who we are. Grateful, precious, and beloved children of God who receive this life and the gifts of the earth and one another as a blessing from God. And we return the gift of that blessing by giving ourselves away to others. As we do this, as we receive and share God's love in all the ways we can, we live into being image bearers, right? Whose image do we bear? Not Caesar's, but God's. We live into being image bearers, revealing God's light and love and generosity in all the ways that we can and in ways that yield a bountiful harvest of welcome, delight, belonging, and generous care. So, <clears throat> I just want to lift up that I am deeply, deeply grateful for all of you and for the leadership teams of Ebenezer United Church of Christ, who truly seek to live into this call to be extravagantly welcoming and generous in ways that reveal God's light and love. I was recently talking to someone who was not a member of this congregation, but marvels at the extravagant welcome and generosity of this congregation and how we share our building and so many of the resources that are contained within it. And she marvels at the many ministries that welcome the involvement of everyone. You don't have to belong to this church and how those ministries seek to show God's love to people and agencies in our community in tons of ways. So as we were setting up the chapel for the Lent luncheon, because it was <laughs> one of very few spaces available in the entire building that day, she said, you know, I think your building could be twice as big and you would still have this problem because it would still be busy and it would still be full. A beautiful observation that we don't own it, but we are entrusted with its care, generous sharing, and the faithful management of it, which is an extension of our stewardship of one another and the community that surrounds us. Now, y'all are good, but need to recognize that we are a work in progress. So we earnestly pray that we remain open to the leading and the teaching and the loving encouragement of the one who continues to freely give of himself. The one who meets us here at table, the sacred table of love and grace where Jesus generously continues to offer himself as nourishment and life, calling us to be generous with what God has entrusted to us, calling us to be generous in relationship, in friendship, and in love with one another. So friends, as we gather at this table, we remember that on that night of darkness and betrayal, Jesus sat at table with his disciples, and there he took bread, he blessed it, and he broke it, and he said, take and eat. 
For this is my body, which is broken for you, that you might be made whole. So whenever you eat of this, remember me. And in the same way, Jesus took the cup, saying, this cup is a new covenant that is poured out for you and poured out for all. So whenever you drink of this, remember me. And now, O oh God, as we, your children, gather at Christ's table, we pray, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come and bless this bread and this fruit of the vine. And we pray that you would bless each of us, all of us, in our eating and drinking at this table, that our eyes might be opened. And we might see the risen Christ in our midst and each, in each other and in all whom Jesus died and lives to save. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God, no matter who you are or how old you are or where you are on life's journey, you're welcome here. So friends, please come for all things are now ready. And keep me, God be the prayer to move my voice, God be the strength to now uphold me, oh Christ surround me, oh Christ surround me. We give you thanks. We give you thanks for the generous invitation to participate in what you are doing in the world, the sharing of our love and our friendship and our kindness by showing your love in so many ways, including by the giving of our gifts and tithes and offerings to the ministries of the congregation, the body of Christ, that your love might be made more visible and real in the world. And we give thanks, O oh God, for the ways in which your love becomes tangible in ways that are meaningful for us through the receiving of the sacrament, where we partake of the body of Christ and receive all of those benefits. So enrich us, we pray, by the power of your Holy Spirit, so that Jesus' life can be made real in our mortal bodies, and that all of our days might be spent in his love and service. All these we ask and we give thanks in the name of the one who taught us to pray together when he said, Loving God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please, you are seated. <laughs> now I invite Todd Kinney to please come forward. For those of you who might not remember or be aware, um, Todd Kinney was elected to consistory at our annual meeting in January. And um, we had a number of people who were staying on for another term or still fulfilling terms. So Todd is the lone person who's up there for the installation. So the spotlight's on you, buddy. Uh -huh. <laughs> so we recognize in these moments that affirmation of ministry is the act whereby a local church of the United Church of Christ recognizes the diverse gifts of its members and celebrates the particular ministry of each life in the church or in various settings in the life of the world. So there are many different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same spirit gives them. And we know that there are different ways of serving, but the same God is served. 
There are different abilities to perform service, but the same God gives ability to each of us for our particular service. Christ is like a single body which has many parts. It's still one body, even though it's made up of many parts. And we know that if one part of the body suffers, all other parts suffer with it. If one part is praised, all the other parts share in its happiness. All of us are Christ's body, and each is a part of it. So this gentleman has been called in accordance with the faith and order of the church to serve among us. He has accepted his call and is before us to witness to his willingness to serve. So, Todd, it is an honor to be entrusted with responsibility for particular service in the ministry of the church, whether it's gathered or scattered. As a faithful witness of the inclusive and revolutionary love of Jesus Christ, you will prayerfully discern God's call to this body of Christ. Seek to grow in holy love and seek the wisdom of the Spirit as you extend hospitality to all and joyfully, joyfully seek to live your faith as you show and share God's love as a consistory member. May the Holy Spirit be upon you to empower you to the ministry to which you have been called. I would ask, friends, that you please join your voice with mine as we affirm Todd. Todd, we affirm your ministry among us. We are grateful for your service to this body of Christ. May you experience blessing as you live your faith and share your leadership in ways that strengthen and empower this body of Christ. Okay, Todd. Just do that. There you go. May the Holy Spirit strengthen you for this ministry, Todd, and equip you with everything good to do God's will. Receive authority to engage in this ministry in the name of Christ. Let all of God's people say, Amen. So, in the name of Jesus Christ and on behalf of the people of Ebenezer United Church of Christ, I rejoice to announce that you, Todd, are installed as a consistory member. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord and the people. Amen. <laughs> Friends, during the time with the children, I did lift up that we are receiving the one great hour of sharing offering uh, almost through the whole month. Well, we'll receive it through the whole month of March. It's going to be dedicated on Palm Sunday, March 24th. So you can either donate to that special offering of the United Church of Christ by using the special offering envelopes, which are on the tables near the exits of the sanctuary, where you will place your offering if you choose to share your offering in worship. Or you can donate online. There's a button that says OGHS, One Great Hour of Sharing. That's how you do that. Um, so if you're interested in ordering Easter plants or flowers, please note that those orders have to be turned in today. So there are extra order forms on the comma counter. They're pink if you need one of those. And uh, as you might have been able to tell by the smell when you walked in, today is the Youth Brat Fry. And all are encouraged and welcome to enjoy a delightfully grilled brat or hamburger with any number of sides. So you can support the youth of the church by dining in, carrying out, or driving through to enjoy all of these Wisconsin favorites. So again, this coming Wednesday, we will enjoy a worshipful Lent potluck luncheon uh, at noon, and all are welcome to that. There's a sign-up sheet for those of you who know that you plan to attend on Wednesday, and that's just for the setup. If at the last second you can come, just come. Just come. We have plenty of chairs. And next Sunday, immediately following the worship service, everyone is invited to a game day. We will share a potluck lunch and spend some time together enjoying your favorite board games and card games or whatever games you, you like to play. Now, because of egg roll making, this gathering is going to be in the Shining Star Sunday School room, so it's in the Sunday School hallway. So, please make note of that for next Sunday, the 10th, and mark your calendars for Sunday, March 17th, as the Reverend Daniel Cooper writer, the author of Speak with the Earth and It Will Teach You, the book that we read for book study back in January, he's going to be here, and he's going to preach at Ebenezer on the 17th, and seriously, 
This man is an amazing theologian and, in Charlie's words, an exquisite writer. And I've heard from some of my colleagues, he's just an outstanding speaker. So you do not want to miss this on Sunday, March 17th. Brian, you have an announcement? <laughs> Sell grilled chicken dinner tickets today. I know it caught me by surprise too. <laughs> uh, as usual, our lovely ladies will be out at the comic counter eagerly waiting to sell you tickets. Dine in, carry out, drive through. But if you dine in, you get nice time for fellowship. Mm -hmm. uh, first Sunday in May. So get your tickets, buy them for friends, relatives, give them for gifts. <laughs> Whatever works. <laughs> Whatever works. We want to do better than last year. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. We appreciate that. Um, so March Madness isn't just a designation for college basketball. There's like something like several things every week here in March. Um, Witness Wednesday is movie night at the Marcus Theater for our church. On Wednesday, March 20th, we have a private event at the movie theater, which begins at 6.30 p.m. You can come, start coming to the theater as early as like 6.10. Um, the cost is $5 per person for this private event. Yes, you can invite friends and neighbors, whatever, but everybody has to sign up, okay? We're already bumping up to the next size theater because we have over 30 people. And as many people as want to go, we're totally cool with that. We really are. We just need to let the movie theater know so that we can get a bigger theater. Last time we started at the theater that seats 29 and we ended up with like 68 people. So um, if you could please make sure that you sign up for that event, we would truly appreciate that. And again, friends and family members and neighbors are welcome. Um, also, uh, we hold in our prayers those who continue to wrestle with, with illness or injury or disease or recovering from surgery. And I think it's also really important that we continue to pray for peace and reconciliation in our relationships and in the world. So if we have no other announcements or acknowledgements, Barb. Oh, sure, sorry. I should have done that. Fascinatingly, uh, Kathy and I had been talking about medical debt relief for I don't know, a couple months. Um, the movie is called Ordinary Angels. And it's about how a woman who might, to some people, seem like the last person who could make a significant difference of revealing God's light and love in the world, completely changes the life of a single father in her town. So um, by rallying the community, uh, Hilary Swank um, is probably one of the biggest names in this movie. So, so yeah, it's in the movie theater now. But don't go see it. Come with us, right? Come with us on the 20th. Um, we would appreciate that. So, there's a, thank you. I did not take very good notes on this, did I? <laughs> Communicate as a group, that works better. Um, sign up sheets are on the common counter. So if that first one is full, just flip it. And there's plenty of space on the other side. Confirmation students, because this is part of Witness Wednesday, are free. And I have the confirmation students signed up on there. So if family members are going to attend, um, you don't have to include your confirmation student in that count. So friends, if we have no other announcements or acknowledgements, if you could please stand and join with me in singing another wonderful song by Brian Sergio and his daughter, Emma. God will see us through.
And now, beloveds, may the spirit of the living God made most fully known to us as Christians through Jesus Christ our Lord. Go before you to show you the way. Go behind you to push you into those places you might not necessarily go yourself. Go above you to watch over you, beneath you to lift you up and buoy you and walk beside you to remind you, surely you are never alone and you are loved beyond your wildest imagination and dwell within you to remind you who and whose you are always. And may the light of God's blessing burn brightly upon you, within you and through you, today and always. Amen.